everyone, welcome to Inno Tutorial Civil Engineering video. In this video, we are going to understand what is development led in structural reinforcement, the concept behind development led, why do we need development led when reinforcing structural elements like beams and columns, and also how should we provide development led in reinforcement design. So, if you want to learn these things, then you sure don't want to click off immediately, but stick to the end of this video to properly understand development length in structural reinforcements. Let's begin. In a layman term, development length will simply mean the minimum length of the river that must be embedded or placed in concrete in order for the concrete structure to develop its full strength. Now, I'm going to explain this in details so that you fully get the concept behind development length. We all know that we have two limit state design approach. The first limit state is the limit state of collapse, while the second limit state is the limit state of serviceability. So, what this basically means is that for the collapse limit state, your structure should be strong enough so as to resist the load that are acting on it, so that the structure doesn't get damaged. While for the serviceability limit state, it means that your structure should not only be strong enough to resist the load acting on it, but it should also be serviceable. Now what do I mean by this? Serviceable in the sense that your structure should not deflate too much. Now, I'm going to give an example so that you understand this better. Now, let's say you are standing on a slab in a room and the designer of that slab designed the slab for just limit states of collapse. And the beams or gathers underneath supporting the slab starts to deflect too much, although the slab won't collapse. But I am pretty sure you won't be comfortable standing on that slab anymore. Psychologically, you will get afraid because you think that the slab is going to collapse because the slab is deflating too much. So because of this reason, structural designers must be able to design a building or a structure that will be able to take the load in limit state of collapse and also in limit state of serviceability. Now you know this, one of the things you need to provide to satisfy the limit state of collapse is the bond. Now the question, what is the bond? Okay, I'm going to explain this, so stick with me. We know we provide reinforcement in concrete. Now let's say we provide steel bar reinforcement in a beam. And we try to remove the steel bar in the beam by applying a tensile force. The rebar won't come out because there is a bond between the concrete and the rebar. So this bond is simply the adhesion or the glue between the concrete and the rebar, which is preventing the rebar from slipping out of the concrete. And this bond is generated because we do not use a plain steel bar with smooth surface which will prevent friction between the concrete and the bar but we use deformed bars which has a rough surface so this is going to increase the friction between the concrete and the bar so due to this reason they become an interlocking between the concrete and the rebar so whenever you apply a force on the pin the force is going to be transferred to the rebar and the rebar will transfer the force directly to the column. So, to transfer the load from the beam to the column, the length of the rebar that is embedded inside the column needs to be sufficient enough. If it is not sufficient enough, then the load that is applied on the beam won't be transferred to the column and this will increase the chances of the beam or the structure failing. 
So, the appropriate lens that must be embedded in the column to prevent failure is the development lens. So, this is what we know as a development lens. So, it is actually the appropriate lens that must be embedded in the column in order to prevent failure. Now, what value is a development lens and how do we calculate it? So, you are going to watch this in my next video because I'm going to be explaining how to calculate the development lens, what value is the development lens. So, you sure want to watch my next video. So, watch this in my next video where I will explain how to calculate the development lens and what value is the development lens. So, this is the meaning of development lens and why we provide development lens on structures. Now, don't leave without subscribing to this channel if you are new. I make videos on civil engineering. So, it will do the channel a help if you can just kindly hit the red subscribe button below this video and also click the bell icon so that whenever I upload any video, you will be the first to get notified. So, with that being said, you all take good care of yourself. Bye-bye.